Now, the Department of Education continues to receive the largest share of uh, government allocations. It's been allocated 396.4 billion rand for basic education, uh, university transfers, as well as the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, NSFAS. But Amnesty International for South Africa says that government needs to do more to deal with uh, things like school infrastructure, expenditure, and monitor progress. So for a little bit more on this. We're now joined in studio by Minka Staitler, who's uh, the media liaison officer at Amnesty International South Africa. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, welcome to the program. Thank you, Peter. Thanks for having us. All right, so people might think Amnesty International Education? Where's the mix? Well, we work in human yeah. rights and it's the right to education. It's enshrined in the South Africa Constitu Constitution. But not only that, the government actually has obligations internationally as well in something called um, the, a convention, a UN convention on economic, social and cultural rights under which the government has to actually report on its progress to the UN mm -hmm. on education is one of them as well so that's why amnesty got involved of course there are other organizations like equal education in section yeah. 27 that have worked on these issues for years but as an international organization we wanted to have another look and we wanted to bring an international mm. light to this because it just cannot continue the mm. way it is so education is the biggest uh, line item in terms of budget allocation and yet you have concerns where are they mostly centered yeah, so our concerns are mostly centered at this stage on infrastructure. There are other things that we're worried about, uh, teacher training and retention, um, uh, the equitable share formula, which is the way in which uh, provinces and schools and so on are uh, funded. But at this stage, we're very worried about infrastructure. And why this is, is because in his speech, uh, Minister Mbaweni did say that schools that were built of, of uh, materials that mm. were no longer appropriate would be replaced with new schools and that there would be proper you know resourcing and sanitation at these schools which we really welcome but we really struggle to find the progress reports on these we really struggle to see are we going to sit in a year's time listen to another budget speech another amount of money given and we still can't ascertain where there's been progress and how many of mm. just under 4,000 schools that have only pit latrines as their uh, um, form of sanitation, how many of those schools have been tackled? Mm -hmm. How many of those schools now have you know, clean and healthy and safe sanitation for learners? I seem to remember the president giving the Minister of uh, Basic Education a timeline to get rid of these uh, pit latrines. That time has passed. Yeah. Uh, has there been an explanation that you know? Uh, th th it is obviously a complicated mm. issue. So we don't want to only shout. We do want to engage. But we want to know, you know, what... We want to know where can we help? Where can... Not just mm. us, but... Or where can we work together as a society if it's that difficult that these targets that they've set themselves yeah. aren't missed over and over and over again? And something, you know, that's interesting is they talk about in including uh, coding and robotics for, for learners of grade R to grade 3. These are very young people. And, and that's great because obviously there is the, you know, the, the, the future lying in front of them. But we worry that... Can they guarantee that one of these children would not drown in a pit latrine in the near future or in the years right. going ahead? And that cannot be happening anymore. Does infrastructure include new schools? Because we see some schools only go up to grade 10 and uh, then a lot of children in the community have to travel really far uh, to further their education. Where there is a school, where mm. yes, it does include new schools mm. if there is a need for it in that area because ideally children shouldn't be traveling that far. Our research actually found that by traveling that far and they're, they're, they're often not um, provided uh, transport, their safety is put at risk yeah. as well. And we had learners tell us that they're late for school almost every day, which if you add up the amount of learning time that they then miss it also has an impact on their futures so it is ideal if is it however there are schools in certain areas mm -hmm. where students still travel far because that school is not up to scratch because a roof has been blown up and blown off in 2014 and never been replaced so those students might sometimes go and seek education elsewhere mm -hmm. what we're saying is those schools also need to be made fit for purpose so that students don't have to travel that far do you get a sense that there's a proper accounting of um, 
where this budget is going? I mean, it's an enormous amount of money. We struggle to find it, uh, we have to admit, and that's what was striking for us yesterday is saying these things, but when we go in we try and find the information, the information is either woefully slim, woefully badly reported on, or not standardized across provinces. So it varies from province to province. So some provinces might do better reporting mm -hmm. than others. But it would be very nice to see more of a standardized and uh, you know, monitoring and evaluation approach. And there are reports, but we really want it, it should be more frequent and we should be able to access this easier. And when, we say, when I say we, I mm -hmm. mean the public of South Africa, not just Amnesty International, because taxpayers actually also deserve to know where every rand is spent and learners deserve to learn in safe, clean, healthy mm -hmm. and happy environments. All right. So, I mean, we, we often use the expression, we need more bang for our buck. Yeah. Uh, you know, when we look north to countries like Zimbabwe that have a fraction of uh, the kinds of budgets that uh, South Africa has to education and uh, other countries in the region, uh, w w do we have an understanding of perhaps why we're not getting our, the bang for our buck? Infrastructure is one thing, but there must be other issues of concern. We are concerned uh, about, for example, you know, corruption and so forth mm -hmm. as well, uh, the impact on people's human rights. We are concerned about how um, s teachers are retained and, and trained. Uh, we are concerned, we, we did call in our research for a review and then a possible reform, depending on the review, of the way in which provinces and schools are, um, are funded. Uh, the department has often said to us, and we are really open to engaging, the department has often said that look, um, the minister gives the money and then it's up to you know the provinces to actually make it happen and that the minister doesn't have as much power and that the accountability mm -hmm. lies with the provinces. But then you know then there needs to be still be really systematic reporting on this. And unfortunately mm -hmm. the buck does stop with the minister. So um, we would really love in the next year to see much better progress reports and maybe in next year's budget just seeing you know what progress have they made on infrastructure or what progress have they made on textbooks or classroom sizes mm -hmm. that are growing. All right, okay, uh, Minka Stetler, thanks so much indeed. I think the Minister has heard you and hopefully we'll see some infrastructure build and other issues that give, get given urgent attention. Thanks so much indeed for your time. Thank you for Always having us. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Peter.